Howdy folks, welcome back to the shop. It's James at Wrexham, wrexham.com.au. Wrexham is what we do. And this is another video in our workshop series and there's a lot to cover in here. You probably already know, but I am a boutique bullet maker, striving to get fully automated, develop a, an industry here, um, make the best products. I'm co constantly updating our geometries and and products and talking to suppliers and trying to get everything done here. We've got some really exciting news coming up about that. Um, but away from the bullet stuff. So if you're interested, go to the Wrexham Australia Facebook site. You can follow our journey there, be part of it, see what we're all about. And then, you know, in my downtime, which isn't much, I'm going to do this for fun because I love this. I think YouTube's really cool and I love sharing stuff and learning stuff. If I could put down on paper everything I've learned from YouTube, it would be a million pages long. So I want to contribute as well. So moving forward with that, we're going to do two things on this video. Number one, we're going to talk about the six jaw chuck spider and how I trued my six jaw chuck, which was running out almost 0.3 of a millimeter when I got it. It's one of the Sanal chucks. It's on my 960B. Um, Obviously not enough for die making, so I've, I've had to learn how to make dies, heat treat, lap, and hit repeatable tolerances of 0.005 plus or minus of a millimeter every single time. So it's tough going for bullets, but you know, it's what I had to learn how to do. So to help me do that, I needed to true up this six jaw, because the three jaw is okay, but again, it had run out. I'm gonna have to true that up as well. All I did was use this 3D printed part and machine it with a 16 millimeter carbide boring bar. I'm gonna show you how I did that and then show you on the um, dial indicator that we're running out less than 0.01. It's the needle belly moves, it's only 0.005. I'm guessing I don't have an indicator that accurate, but I will probably get one to prove it. But anyway, these work. So I'm a big fan of additive manufacturing and that's where we're going with the next stage of this because this is something I need and I'm going to prove it to you by embarrassingly showing you what my workbench looks like at the moment and what my lathe looks like at the moment because I feel like I got to work 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 and I work till like 10 11 o'clock at night I go to bed and then I'm up at 4 30 to go to my regular job so I'll show you this too so part of that additive manufacturing is we're going to be making tool holders MT3 as well or cat 40 cat 30 whatever you want BT30 but we are gonna build the ultimate men's or women's, I guess, rolling tool cart that just has everything organized, including your mill tools, your lathe tools, you know, in your drills, your MT, whatever it is, or what, and you can roll that thing around, it's gonna have everything on it. And I'm gonna be using a trolley a starting trolley which is available everywhere they're like sixty dollars to eighty dollars on amazon maybe a hundred dollars but they're all about the same and we're going to start with that i'm going to make a list i'm going to put it online we can follow this journey and then if people really like it i'll be able to supply them the list or just put everything together 3d print the arbors that they need for it and just they can go get the other stuff and i'll just sell them the tool holders for the, the 3D printed ones because they're really good. So this is going to be not only a quick machining video, but the ultimate build video of the ultimate tool cabinet. I've got inspiration from Titans of CNC for this and all these other people which I watch online and I'm like, you know what? This could be done really well for your average guy in a machine shop who just has a lathe and a mill and he just wants to grab the tools he needs, go over there, keep them clean, keep them organized. So that's the plan. Let's get into it. Let's go over the computer and get started. Actually, on second thought, the first thing we should do is get machining and true up this six jaw chuck with that six jaw lathe spider. Show you how that works now and then we'll go over there, show you me machining it, and then we'll move on to the ultimate project, which is the build. Okay, here we go. Okay, so if you have one of these six jaw chucks or three jaw chucks, I could probably print a, um, a three jaw one just fine. The first thing to note is you need to label now like one, two, and three, whichever uh, scroll gear that you're going to index everything off. So I've got my marks here. I fill these with white out, the bases of them, so they stay white for a while. You could use a paint pen, it's probably better. 
and then I write a one and a one and I write a one here and I just never want to forget but I've lined it up with the grease nipple as well so or the oil nipple so I know that that is always top and if I'm ever going to take it off I'll label them again because I mean I could find it again but at least I know that this is going to give me the same repeatable results every single time. I might move this around a little bit. That's a little bit better. Okay, so 3D printed six jaw. So it's been mashed a bit because I've run a boring bar through it. 3D printed six jaw um, spider. Now you always want to be clamping down on the jaws when you're. Um, trying to do a grind of the jaws to true them up or if you want to um, bore them. Now I've bored these obviously and I'm actually going to put the flat face that was um, against the bed of the 3D printer up against the jaws. I'm just going to push them in and I'm just going to tighten it until it bites. Give it a little bit of a turn. Oops. I have got the uh, gear engaged a little bit of a turn and a little bit of a turn and that's now really tight. Now the reason I do that is because this has taken up most of the tension and then I've just pushed the jaws in a little bit more and that's all I've done. That's now nice and tight. It's nice and rigid. That's not going to move at all. And the diameter here is about 25 millimeters internally. I then just get my 16 millimeter boring bar with not too much stick out and I'm gonna run it in at 160 RPM, which is the slowest on the 960's belt drive on the high gear. It does go slower, but 160's actually worked really, really well for me. And of course, depending on your lathe, I'm at the, I was at the absolute slowest RPM. And then don't walk, don't be tempted to walk away while it's running, otherwise you will crash this into there because it goes so slow you get tired of it and um, anyway we'll show you the video of running that in and the video of the results with the uh, dial indicator all right let's do that well, it's saying here it's important to note it is smacking in the two or three jaws right at the front here and then it's you're doing nothing as it's going back in and then you're picking up so there's a lot of inconsistency in there. So it's why I should put in drawers as you can hear. And I'll probably do a spring pass as well, to be honest. Clean up any curves and you know, and it's got to be drawers. So it's probably just between the teeth, but Carbide boring bar at 160 RPM. I've just put any old end mill in there that I could find and I just wanted to show you the results. <laughs> Hot damn! Uh, I've tried it with a couple of different sizes and it's all the same. So we're looking at less than 0.01 of a mil run out. So do I need a collar chuck anymore? I don't know, but this uh, six jaw 3D printed spider uh, just goes on the front there. Should I just spin this around? Um, goes on there like that. It's about a 25 millimeter radius and I just hit it at 160 and that was the result.